Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak here um, about Sanyona, which is a Danish biotech company listed here in Stockholm at the uh, NASDAQ uh, main market. So, uh, Sanyona, yeah, I have a forward-looking statement advice here, but I have a, a single slide here actually giving uh, the highlights of, of Sanyona. So, a, a company uh, founded in 2012 and uh, we have been very focused on doing business deals from the very start. Uh, made a deal with Pfizer, one with Johnson & Johnson, and one with Boehringer Ingelheim more recently. And also we have made other deals that I can get back to. We have uh, built up a broad and deep pipeline uh, with some very advanced programs that I can get back to, uh, but also something that uh, looks into the future uh, for new uh, potential partnerships and new developments. So uh, the two most advanced programs we have taken out the most of, of the risk are in those programs because we actually know that the compounds work, which is uh, quite uh, seldom in our industry actually uh, at this stage. So one is the program called tesofensine, which is a unique weight loss drug. And it uh, has gone through all the clinical development, uh, completed phase three, and is, uh, we hope it will be launched on in, the, in the first market already next year by our partner Medix. And um, then it could potentially go into other markets as well. But the main value driver in the company we actually see as uh, another compound which is related to tesofensin, it's called tesomet, and this is a product that we potentially could develop all, our, all the way ourselves uh, into orphan indications in eating disorders. And we are having two shots at goal here, one in a disease called Paravilli syndrome and another uh, hypothalamic obesity. And we have already shown that in uh, Paravilli patients, we have a very, very strong efficacy of the drug. So in, a, in addition to these uh, late-stage products, we have a number of earlier-stage programs based on our uh, quite unique uh, research platform in iron channels. And this is also the basis for all the deals we have made, uh, this iron channel platform. And I would uh, mention four programs here, two partnered and two internal programs, uh, get back to that, that are either in the clinic or close to getting into the clinic out of that platform. And this uh, could, of course, also be basis for new deals. So I'll uh, put the pipeline forward in, in two ways. Uh, one is the internal pipeline, where we are investing ourselves in bringing these programs forward. And I mentioned two of these already on the Tesomet product. We are doing phase two development in these two indications, Paravili syndrome, hypothalamic obesity. I'll get back to that later. And uh, we should be ready uh, within the the next months uh, uh, to complete uh, that phase two and then go into the more pivotal phase two B, phase three studies uh, that would be needed for registration of the product. The SAN 711, uh, of course, much early in development, ready to go into the clinic, is a unique new treatment principle in neuropathic pain and also in itching. I'll get back to that. And the IK program, again, out of our Iron Channel platform, uh, a completely new way of treating uh, immune cell uh, overactivity. And we are especially going into uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's uh, colitis. And now to the partner pipeline, where I already mentioned the most advanced program, the tesofensin program, where all the clinical studies have been completed, and it's now in registration phase with our partner, Medix, for launch, later potential launch in Mexico. We have uh, partnerships with a company now called Cadent. Uh, it was actually made as a spin-out company of San Yona. We've made three spin-outs over the years. And uh, it's developed... Uh, scan out of our iron channel platform, uh, and it's uh, developed for uh, ataxias, which is a, a rare, uh, very severe neurological disease uh, that you actually die from, and this would, could potentially be, become the first. What do we do now?
we can do it this way. <laughs> Display settings, perhaps. Okay. Thank you. I was talking about the attacks. Uh, so uh, our partner, our, our spin-out company, Caden How, has brought, brought the compound into phase two. Uh, we have a, an ownership in the company, and also we have royalties on the sale of that product. Uh, we have a big partnership uh, with uh, Böhringer Ingelheim here in schizophrenia, again an iron channel program, and we have so far received uh, nine million dollars or euros in, in that agreement in upfront milestone payments. Uh, and uh, our partner selected a candidate last summer, and we are expecting them to bring that into the clinic uh, early next year. And then there is a phase two program in cocaine addiction, uh, where we are also not paying ourselves. It's all done by public funds or funds uh, from the US uh, and uh, by investigators in Philadelphia. So first about the Medix partnership, uh, the uh, obesity drug. Uh, so the deal has made in a way that they have the rights in Mexico and in Argentina. Uh, they finance everything and we will get double digit royalties from that sales. We will have the rights uh, to their data in the rest of, of the world and also um, they, they have no, no uh, rights outside of, of that territory. And this could be quite interesting because the package in Mexico uh, could actually potentially be used in all other South American countries and potentially in other countries uh, where we could go. As I said, they are here. Uh, potential registration this year and commercialization next year and one year later in uh, Argentina. So I don't have any slides here on the efficacy of the drug, but as I said, it's a very, very effective weight loss drug, more than 10% weight in loss in six months, better than exist, ex existing drugs. And this was also seen in the phase three study. But more about the Tesomed product, which is actually a combination of tesofensine and uh, a beta blocker called, called metropolol. And here we have a completely new pattern state on that product. It could potentially also be used in obesity and diabetes in NASH, but we are, uh, have decided to go for the smaller indications where we see a very good uh, business uh, opportunity for us. And it's in these two indications, paravilia and hypothalamic obesity. So paravilia is a genetic disease where there is a mutation in a certain gene, and that leads to uh, many different complications in this patient, but one severe one is in the appetite center of the brain. So these patients have no appetite control whatsoever. And this means that they are focusing on eating all of the time. They can get very big, but also uh, they have a miserable life, life out of that. And, and it's also uh, life threatening for them. Hypothalamic obesity is not genetic, it's actually an acquired disease, but uh, has many overlaps with Pardavili because here also the appetite center is destroyed. Uh, and that is uh, from a physical thing. It could be a stroke, it could be a cancer that grows into the appetite center and needs to be removed on the surgery can do this damage. And again, these patients from one day to the other go from being lean to being extremely big because they just think about eating all of the time. Here we also started, uh, uh, in, in the Pardavili uh, patients, we started a, a phase two study in 2018. Uh, it's almost completed now, has both been in both adults and, and adolescents. And we are now preparing for the last two pivotal studies, phase two B and phase three. In uh, hypothalamic obesity, we started uh, just a couple of months ago. And based on this, we should also be able to go into uh, the pivotal studies and FDA filing in 2022. Both of these uh, indications, very big market opportunities. It's small diseases, but you can uh, have a, a large payment uh, a price here uh, in, in these rare indications. 
So here is a little bit more about the Pardavili syndrome. I don't think I'll get much more into that. Um, the opportunity, uh, well, analysts estimate that th this could be a three billion US dollar market. And uh, it's based on what the number of patients, of course, around 20,000 in Europe and US, and also based on the price that's us usually uh, taken for drugs of this uh, type in the orphan disease space. And there are no drugs today uh, approved for treating uh, this overeating or hypophagia. We think we could do this by a relatively small investment. Uh, there are clear endpoints, and we would see the phase two studies in the order of uh, phase three studies in the order of hundred patients, and the commercialization should also be uh, straightforward. So we think we can actually do this ourselves. We have, as I said, done the first uh, uh, exploratory studies in this indication, and some some very interesting data. Although it's very few patients, nine patients, adults in the first study, six on drug, three on placebo, we saw a very, very strong effect on craving and also weight loss. We also saw that the dose was probably a little too high. Uh, there were a couple uh, of patients dropping out of the study. But here are the data showing uh, this hypophagia score. Uh, so the ability of the patient to, uh, or the, the patient's focus on eating all the time with a nine question questionnaire. And it's really, really difficult to get down. Uh, we got it down to, essentially zero after three months treatment where the placebo went a little bit up and down and then ended up uh, about where it started. So this has never been seen before uh, in, with any other drugs. And also the weight loss was ni nice, uh, about 6.7% uh, uh, of weight loss in three months, nothing in placebo. So, as I said, the dose was probably a little too high. So, in the second part, we have done some uh, dose titration. We have done uh, uh, started with a much lower dose, 0.125, and then we have uh, more recently gone up to 0.25 in an open label extension. We saw it was very well tolerated in this study, and also uh, we concluded this will probably only be enough in few patients, but we have now. The conclusion from the, the study, uh, although it has been very small, I think it's uh, very clear that we can see a dramatic a decrease in hypophagia. We can see very nice weight loss at this uh, dose of 0.5, which is what we give the obese patients. Uh, but it may be too high in some patients. This one is probably uh, not effective in, in all patients. Uh, but it's w very well tolerated, and we definitely believe that point two, between 0.25 and 0.5. So that dose uh, range study has now uh, given us the conclusion that this is what we would use in this as a starting dose, 0.25 milligram in the uh, pivotal studies. Now, hypothalamic obesity. I did uh, mention a little bit about that. Uh, so in, in addition to their life-threatening obesity, they also have serious quality of life issues uh, and also um, or very often depression and suicide. And there is no treatment today and we see no competitors in the market. Uh, the prevalence is probably a little less here, uh, about half of what we see in the part of Ili, uh, but we would expect the price of the drug to be about the same in this indication, and same arguments for the business case here. We started the study in February, and uh, it's going to enroll uh, up to 25 patients. It's run in Denmark at Rigshospitalet. 24 weeks treatment, half a year treatment, and then we will open. Uh, the pl placebo uh, control part of it will be completed, and that is what we will use for the pivotal studies. But the patients will actually continue on another half year uh, in open label uh, setting. And we are, of course, me measuring uh, body weight, appetite, metabolic effect, and quality of life. So there's, as I said, very, very little that has been tried in this in indication, but one is actually a compound called cibutramine, which is not that different from, from uh, tesofensine. 
uh, it's much less effective as a weight loss drug, but it actually worked uh, in an in a experimental study some years ago, also done at, at Rich Hospital in Denmark. So uh, that was the two major value drivers or the most advanced programs uh, in the company. Uh, but this is then the earlier stage pipeline, the iron channel pipeline, uh, where I talked about the, the Caden program. Uh, the uh, SAN 711 program is uh, this uh, program that works very effectively in itching and in pain. And it's completely new treatment principle for pain. Uh, and it is appears to be as effective as the morphine, the opiates, but certainly doesn't have the side effects of these drugs where you know that uh, it gives abuse liability and also uh, there is a tolerance development, which means that if you give morphine one week uh, after the first dosing, you'll have more or less lost the effect. So you need to go up and up and up in, in morphine doses and that, that of course gives uh, other serious problems. This is not seen at all with this compound SAN711. And also, very interestingly, this could be a completely new principle for treating itching. And we are ready to start phase one studies now after we have completed the preclinical package. The schizophrenia program, we cannot talk so much about that, but I think I mentioned the status uh, that it should go into man early next year. IK program in a new principle for treat treatment of autoimmune diseases for uh, simply modulating uh, uh, the activity of the immune cells in general, and we've seen very, very nice effect in IBD. More or less ready to select the candidate uh, to go into preclinical development here. I'll not uh, do more about the even earlier programs, but we have a number of iron channel programs that could be very relevant for uh, out licensing partnering. The financials, um, we earned 55 million Swedish uh, last year, which is the double of the year before, and that was primarily uh, caused by a, a milestone payment from Böhringer Engelheim, and this comes once in a while, and we're also hoping to get a big milestone next year when they go into the clinic. The operating expenses also went up. Uh, that is, of course, because we are going into more late-stage development, and I think it's important to state that we have via our partnerships financed uh, about half of the activities in the company. Although we, we run phase two, uh, several phase one programs, uh, we have been able to finance half of that uh, from the deals that we have made with the big pharma partners. So the uh, inflection points over the next year or so, uh, very importantly, Tesomet is going to the last phases of uh, development, phase uh, after completion of these phase 2a studies into pivotal phase 2b phase 3 studies and we should get the uh, data from the hypothalamic obesity early next year. I think the medic deal is very important for us because it uh, we have we are done with that but we will uh, be starting collecting income from that early next year if everything goes well and then first Mexico then Argentina and then potentially other countries that we can control. I think it's also important to state uh, that our platform, early stage platform, has a number of milestones coming up. Initiation of phase one on the pain program, uh, candidate selection in the immune program, uh, moving further into the clinic with our uh, partner Cadence and also for, with Boehringer and potential new collaborations. So a company that has uh, two programs that work, uh, that are one with partner going into launch next year, uh, a compound that we can bring to the market ourselves in very interesting indications, and early state uh, pipeline uh, that really uh, points well forward for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jörgen. Uh, so I'll just start uh, with the prader uh, mm -hmm. study. What do you see as, as the main risks in that, in that study for you? Well, I think we have, we have seen the, the, the borders. We've seen that we can have extremely good efficacy, uh, but also we may touch side effects with, with that dose. We've seen a low dose where we see 
little efficacy, but very well tolerated. So I think we have actually achieved extremely much in this very small study. We now know the dose that we should use. Uh, so uh, that is, uh, has been uh, very well invested this sm small amount and, and should be able to bring us to the uh, FDA interactions and uh, planning, uh, final planning of the uh, pivotal studies. So it's more about the dosing as of right now, at least, you'd say? I would say we have found the dose. Uh, yeah. yeah, It's 0.25 as the starting dose. All right. And then given your, your medics deal there, um, I mean, you're targeting the South American market, it seems, uh, as of right now. Uh, what are the market drivers uh, in that specific region, you'd say? Of course, the medical need yeah. is extreme in, in Mexico, one of the heaviest countries in the world and, and Brazil uh, is, is a there's an extreme medical need uh, there is no reimbursement in that market so it's a uh, but even though uh, the Mexican market is a 215 million dollar market and uh, medics our partner there currently holds half of that market with a very very old drug uh, with a, which is a mix of several compounds so we think there is a very, very nice opportunity, not only in Mexico, but in most of the South American countries. And that's beyond, I mean, 2020 or what do you foresee there? Yes, it will come one by one. So um, Mexico in 2020 mm. and, and then one year later, Argentina and the others uh, even later. Yeah. And then uh, what is the strategy for, for San 711? I mean, how far have you developed this uh, before you want to, to find a partner in, in that sense? Yeah, we, we could uh, take in a partner now, uh, and we are certainly considering that. We are, are discussing with, with many companies, uh, but uh, clearly uh, the, the value uh, would be higher if we uh, go to the next step and show that it actually works. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, always a balance, uh, and, and that we consider for all of our programs. And just lastly, you showed uh, what you foresee for the next year here, but, but what should an investor look at, you think, as of uh, in the current 12 months ahead? What are the main... Uh, yeah, I think uh, the, the last slide uh, mm. summarized this. It would be that we, uh, we get to the phase 2B studies with our TESOMED program. I think that is the most important uh, value trigger. Then on the market with TESOFENSIN. And uh, then there were a number of triggers in the uh, earlier states pipeline that I, I put up on, on the slide. So there will be a lot of, of, of news <laughs> within the yeah. next few months. Okay, Jorgen, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.